How many new sustainable cities should we build? Short answer, zero. If we're serious about healing the earth, building new cities in the wilderness is a complete non-starter. Cities today are already way too sprawling. On this channel, I often show how we can meet our housing, transportation, energy, and food needs on much less land without feeling crowded. So what we're really talking about is how many existing cities will we need to regenerate for total sustainability to house the world. Welcome to Edenicity, Best Practices for Sustainably Abundant Cities. Let's start with some big trends. When I was born, there were 3.3 billion people on this planet. Today, the world population has grown to 8.1 billion people. That's projected to grow to 10 billion by 2058 and 10.4 billion by 2086. After that, the world population is expected to decline as fertility falls due to urbanization. I'll get into that in detail in a later episode. Crunching the numbers from a United Nations forecast, we find that the world's urban population is growing by 200,000 people per day from now through 2050. 90% of that growth is forecast to happen in Africa and Asia, which together occupy about half of the world's land area. The United States occupies 11% of the remaining land area, so you would expect that the urban population of the United States would grow proportionally at 2,200 people a day or 800,000 people a year. In fact, U.S. immigration is more like 2 million people per year. Does that sound like a lot? Well, it is. No other country has immigration numbers that come anywhere close to that raw number. But remember, the United States is big. It's the third most populous country on Earth. Immigrants make up 15% of our population, a lot less than many other countries. Now, by 2050, the United States population is expected to grow to 398 million people, mostly through immigration. Does that make ecological sense? Well, yes. With a global population of 10 billion people distributed evenly throughout the world, there will be 540 million million people in the lower 48 states. Since areas of adequate rainfall rival those of Asia, which has 4.8 billion people, the U.S. could certainly house at least 540 million people on the Edenicity plan. And I think that higher number is much more realistic than most projections. There are so many environmental and economic factors converging to displace people around the world these days. In particular, there are strong ecological reasons why the United States should brace for massive growth in the Midwest. I may get into that in a later episode if people are interested. Now let's look at how many Edenicity cities it would take to house 10 billion people in absolute abundance and 540 million people in the United States. The nine U.S. metros larger than 5 million people house a combined 77 million people. On the Edenicity plan, housing an eventual 540 million people and no further growth in the big cities, we would need to grow 86 cities to 5 million people. If we grow only the largest cities available, nearly every city city larger than half a million people would need an Edenicity plan. For smaller cities and smaller towns, the big task is ecosystem restoration. People on the landscape restoring habitat and biodiversity. That's your big growth industry in the long run. And in many regions, indigenous knowledge and infrastructure has been on the job for centuries. Now, if you're already familiar with pro-density, pro-transit movements such as Yimby or Strong Towns, they're all great. Edenicity would work just fine with any of them, but to end the mass extinction, cities also need to do three more things. Completely ditch car and road infrastructure, add local food and energy production, and get busy restoring surrounding watersheds and ecosystems, working in tandem with people living in smaller settlements closer to the land. Now, what about the world? How many cities would need to upgrade to the Edenicity plan to achieve total abundance for all human beings while ending the mass extinction? Well, worldwide, there are 90 cities bigger than 5 million people, which together house some 975 million people. To house the remaining nine or so billion people, the world would need an additional 1,600 cities on the Edenicity plan. The least populous of the top 1,600 cities has 413,000 people. That's more than enough social energy to get started. In another episode, I showed how Singapore found that you only need 100 to 200,000 people for a self-sufficient modern new town that can meet all of your needs throughout your life. Bottom line, we need Edenicity plans for something like 95 U.S. cities, which includes the nine cities that are already larger than 5 million people, and at least 1,600 cities throughout the world. Piece of cake, right? Now the question is, how will we make these cities 
food and energy secure? And will they be affordable? What would it actually be like to live in places like this? We'll delve deep into these topics in later episodes. Be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Take care, stay green, see you next time.